Boilers contain hundreds or even thousands of tubes. In most modern boilers, steam is generated inside these tubes. The main function of a boiler tube is to transfer heat that is produced by burning fuel to water or steam. Heat from burning fuel passes in through the tube wall where it is picked up by the water or steam. This raises the temperature and pressure inside the tube. In order for a boiler to function properly, the tubes must be strong enough to contain the pressure that they are exposed to without breaking open and leaking. The boiler that doesn't leak hasn't been built. And when we talk about boiler leaks, we're almost always talking about tube failures. Since tube failures are a major cause of boiler shutdown, it's important that you know about them and how they're repaired. The tubes that are used in a boiler look like the one you see here. Some are bigger and some are smaller. It looks very much like a pipe, but it isn't exactly the same as a pipe. Because of the boiler design requirements, tubes are almost always used in boilers. It's important for you to be able to tell the difference between tubes and pipes. For one thing, a pipe will often have a seam that runs along its length. The seam is formed when the pipe is manufactured. Tubes, on the other hand, are manufactured so they do not have seams. Boiler tubes also usually have thicker walls than ordinary pipe. Another difference between pipes and tubes is the way their size is measured. Most pipe sizes are based on the inside diameter of the pipe. Tube sizes, on the other hand, are based on the outside diameter of the tube. So, when the same size of pipe and tube are put side by side, it's obvious that there's quite a difference. Selecting a piece of tube to be used in a repair is something that is often necessary when making a tube repair. Something else that is always necessary is welding. Welding is a method of joining metals by using intense heat to cause them to melt and fuse. Now, we won't try to cover everything that is involved in making welds. Welding is a complex subject, and it would take a lot of time to cover it thoroughly. Our purpose here is to cover tube repair techniques. Generally, we will cover how these repairs are made so that you'll understand what has to be done to repair a boiler tube. But first, let's discuss why tubes fail. There are five basic causes of boiler tube failure. Overheating, corrosion, erosion, mechanical stress, and material defects. Each of these weaken the tubes and reduce their ability to contain pressure. Overheating is the most common cause of boiler tube failure. Overheating can result from deposits from boiler water, inadequate flow of water or steam through the tubes, improper flow of hot gases through the boiler, refractory failure, and improper operation. Boiler tubes are constantly exposed to intense heat. In fact, the temperature is so high that it could melt the tubes. The reason they don't melt is that the water and steam flowing through them keep them cool. Although that water and steam are very hot, they are still cool enough to keep the tubes from melting. Overheating and possibly tube failure result when water or steam are prevented from cooling a tube. Now, one way this can happen is when deposits from boiler water coat the inside of a tube. Scale is an example of a deposit from boiler water. When scale gets too thick inside the tube, it insulates the tube from the cooling flow of water or steam. The metal will overheat, weaken, and then rupture. Blockage in a tube can cause inadequate flow of water or steam through the tube. If the flow is so restricted that the tube can't be kept cool, tube failure from overheating will eventually result. Overheating from improper flow of hot gases happens when the tubes are exposed to more heat than the normal cooling flow can handle. One example of improper flow of hot gases is flame impingement. Flame impingement is direct contact of furnace flame with the tubes. When flame comes in contact with the tubes, it can raise their temperature so high that they fail. Refractory failure is another cause of overheating. Refractory is a heat-resistant material that is sometimes applied to tubes to protect them from direct exposure to hot gases. When refractory fails, tubes that are usually protected are exposed to a lot of heat. 
Then, the normal cooling flow is not enough to prevent overheating from taking place. Improper operation, like overfiring the boiler, also causes overheating. Overfiring happens when too much fuel is fed to the boiler. This raises the boiler's temperature. If the tube metal gets too hot, the tubes will fail. Another basic cause of tube failure is corrosion. Corrosion is deterioration of metal through chemical action. It can appear on either the inside or the outside of the tubes. At either place, corrosion causes failures because it thins out the tube walls, reducing their strength. There are many ways that corrosion can happen inside a boiler tube. One way is through improper water treatment. If the wrong chemicals are added to boiler water, or if incorrect amounts are used, the tubes will corrode. Corrosion can also be produced by oxygen in the boiler. The high temperatures and pressures in the boiler cause oxygen to rapidly attack the metal. Another way corrosion can happen is by leaving a boiler open and wet during shutdown. This will lead to rust, which is a form of corrosion. Corrosion can also be a problem on the outside of the tube. Here, corrosion is the result of moisture combining with the sulfur found in ash or soot. This produces acid, which attacks the tube metal and corrodes it. Corrosive slag is still another cause of corrosion on the outside of the tube. Corrosive slag is formed by contaminants in the fuel. The next basic cause of tube failure is erosion. Erosion is the gradual wearing away of tube metal. This weakens the tube. It can occur on either the inside or the outside of the tube. Erosion on the inside is produced by the flow of water or steam. On the outside, by the flow of gas and ash. Erosion from gas and ash can be particularly severe in coal-fired boilers because they produce large amounts of ash, which is very abrasive. Erosion can also result from steam leaks, this happens when steam from a leak in one tube is directed against another tube. The steam can erode the metal of the tube and cause a failure. Mechanical stress is another basic cause of tube failure. Mechanical stress is the result of pressure, thermal expansion, the weight of the tubes, and vibration. Tubes are built to withstand a certain amount of mechanical stress, but excessive stress leads to failures. For example, boiler tubes are designed to contain pressure. Sometimes extreme pressure can burst the tubes, but that isn't common. What's more common is that something will weaken a tube and normal pressure will rupture it. Thermal expansion is another cause of mechanical stress. Expansion takes place whenever the boiler is fired. The metal tubes expand when they're heated and contract each time they're cooled. If this expansion and contraction can't take place freely, mechanical stress is created. Mechanical stress is also created by weight. Boiler tubes must support their own weight plus the weight of their contents. In boilers that hold a lot of water, this weight puts a heavy mechanical stress on the tubes. The tubes are designed to withstand this stress, but if they're weakened by overheating, corrosion, or erosion, they may not be able to handle it. Vibration sets up another kind of mechanical stress. The flow of water or steam through a tube and the flow of hot gases around a tube can sometimes cause vibration. We've exaggerated the vibration to make it easier to see. As a tube vibrates, it bends back and forth over and over again. This repeated bending can cause the tube metal to crack. This is called metal fatigue. Another cause of tube failure is a material defect. It's a weak spot in a tube metal that was there when the tube was manufactured. A tube that has a material defect, like a thin spot in the wall, may fail as soon as it's put into service. These defects may not be noticed. Tubes should be inspected for material defects before they are installed. A defective tube is much more likely to fail during normal boiler operation than a non-defective tube. We've now gone over five basic causes of tube failure overheating, corrosion, erosion, mechanical stress, and material defects. We've pointed out the different reasons for each and the ways they can cause failures in your boiler's tubes. 
Now, take a few minutes to make sure that all the material we've covered so far is clear to you.